What's up, folks? This is your first time here, welcome. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If this is not your first time here, welcome back. I've missed you. Today, we are riding to a secluded spot, wherever that might be, where we can review the second part of Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. If you missed the first part, go back into our videos on the channel and you'll find part one. You don't wanna miss that, and I recommend starting from the beginning. All right, let's find the spot and get into it. So we found a spot here by the water. It's possibly the windiest place I could have picked. So hopefully the noise, wind noise isn't too distracting, but we have a nice view. All right, so part two, six ways to make people like you. Okay, so in a nutshell, principle one, become genuinely interested in other people. Principle two is to smile. Principle three, remember that a person's name is to that person the sweetest and most important sound in any language. Principle four, be a good listener. Encourage others to talk about themselves. Principle five, talk in terms of the other person's interests. Principle six, make the other person feel important and do it sincerely. So let's dive into each of these principles a little bit more in depth. So principle one, do this and you'll be welcome anywhere. So he starts off by talking about his dog, Tippy. So when I was five years old, my father brought a little yellow-haired pup for 50 cents. He was a light and joy of my childhood. Every afternoon about 4.30, he would sit in the front yard with his beautiful eyes staring steadfastly at the path. And as soon as he heard my voice or saw, saw me swinging my dinner pail through the buck brush, he was off like a shot racing breathlessly up the hill to greet me with leaps of joy and barks of sheer ecstasy. So then he goes on to say how Tippy was struck by lightning and how that was uh, a, the tragedy of his youth, but Tippy never read a book on psychology and he didn't need to. He knew by some divine instinct that you can make more friends in two months by becoming genuinely interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. Let me repeat that. You can make more friends in two months by becoming interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. Yet I know, and you know, people who blunder through life trying to wigwag other people into becoming interested in them. Of course it doesn't work. People are not interested in you. They are not interested in me. They are interested in themselves morning, noon, and after dinner. So Alfred Adler, the famous Viennese psychologist, wrote a book entitled, What Life Should Mean to You. And in that book, this is quoted, It is the individual who is not interested in his fellow man, who has the greatest difficulties in life and provides the greatest injury to others. It is from among such individuals that all human failures spring. So becoming genuinely interested in other people, like Tippy, is a great way to start to win people to your side and to your view. Principle two, a simple way to make a good first impression. So at a dinner party in, in New York, one of the guests, a woman who had inherited money, was eager to make a pleasing impression on everyone. She had squandered a modest fortune on sables, diamonds, and pearls, but she hadn't done anything whatever about her face. It radiated sourness and selfishness. She didn't realize what everyone knows, namely that the expression one wears on one's face is far more important than the clothes one wears on one's back. So why is a smile important? Actions speak louder than words and a smile says, I like you, you make me happy, I'm glad to see you. So I'll pose a question to you, are you smiling enough? Are you aware of and conscious of your facial expressions? Be sure to be smiling. But, a caveat, an insincere grin? No, that doesn't fool anybody. We know it is mechanical and we resent it. I'm talking about a real smile, a heartwarming smile, a smile that comes from within, the kind of smile that will bring a good price in the marketplace. Professor James McConnell 
psychologist at the University of Michigan says people who smile tend to manage, teach, and sell more effectively and to raise happier children. There's far more information in a smile than a frown. That's why encouragement is a much more effective teaching device than punishment. That's interesting, a tangent to smiling, but generally why being positive is more effective than being negative. People like a smile. As with in part one and part two, he does elaborate on each of these principles with stories from the real world uh, and showing that these principles work and the effect that they have. So again, I highly recommend that you read the whole book. This is just a summary or a synopsis. Principle two, smile. Principle three, if you don't do this, you are headed for trouble. Remember that a person's name is to that person the sweetest and most important sound in any language. The average person is more interested in his or her own name than in all the other names on earth put together. Remember that name and call it easily and you have paid a subtle and very effective compliment. So Jim Farley was a traveling salesman for a gypsum concern. And during the years that he held office as town clerk in Stony Point, he built up a system for remembering names. Are you good with names? Are you bad with names? If you say that you're bad with names, what's your system? In the beginning, it was a very simple one. Whenever he met a new acquaintance, he found out his or her complete name and some facts about his or her family, business, and political opinions. He fixed all these facts well in mind as part of the picture. And the next time he met that person, even if it was a year later, he was able to shake hands, inquire after the family, and ask about the hollyhocks in the backyard. No wonder he developed the following. It's the power of remembering names. And that's the system. Build a story of the individuals. Once you're genuinely interested in others and you start asking questions about them, you can start to build stories and remember their names. Principle three. Remember that a person's name is to that person the sweetest and most important sound in any language. So talking about Napoleon here, when he met somebody, if the person was someone of importance, Napoleon went to even further pains. As soon as His Royal Highness was alone, he wrote the name down on a piece of paper, looked at it, concentrated on it, fixed it securely in his mind, and then tore up the paper. In this way, he gained an eye impression of the name as well as an ear impression. So that was Napoleon's system for remembering names. Again, so develop a system for remembering names that works for you. And there are other stories and anecdotes in this bit that show other people's systems. Four, an easy way to become a good conversationalist. So he tells a story about meeting this lady at a party and she says to him, oh, Mr. Carnegie, I do want you to tell me about all the wonderful places you have visited and the sites you have seen. As we sat down on the sofa, she remarked that she and her husband had recently returned from a trip to Africa. Africa, I exclaimed. How interesting. I've always wanted to see Africa, but I never got there except for a 24-hour stay once in Algiers. Tell me, did you visit the big game country? Do tell me about Africa. So he started off with a question to her, but he finishes this by saying, that kept her talking for 45 minutes. She never again asked me where I had been or what I had seen. She didn't want to hear me talk about my travels. All she wanted was an interested listener so she could expand her ego and tell about where she had been. Few human beings are proof against the implied flattery of rapt attention. Think about that for just a moment. Are you giving people the attention they deserve? Are you listening? So there are a number of stories in this chapter where he talks about business individuals de-escalating hot situations simply by listening to hearing people out and lending them a, an ear instead of being combative or wanting to simply get your point across. Principle number four, be a good listener, encourage others to talk about themselves. And this really isn't that hard. Once you follow the first principle, become genuinely interested in other people, listening becomes an easy task. And really, you prefer to listen than to speak because you find people so interesting. Now, principle five, titled, How to Interest People. So it opens with a bit about Theodore Roosevelt. So everyone who was ever a guest of Theodore Roosevelt was astonished at the range and diversity of his knowledge. Whether his visitor was a cowboy or a rough rider, a New York politician or a diplomat, Roosevelt knew what to say and how, and how was it done. The answer was simple. 
Whenever Roosevelt expected a visitor, he sat up late the night before reading up on the subject in which he knew his guest was particularly interested. For Roosevelt knew, as all leaders know, that the royal road to a person's heart is to talk about the things he or she treasures most. Are we interested enough in people to know what they treasure most? Something that we should ask ourselves. So he talks about a story where when he was young, his mother had a lawyer friend over that talked to him about boats for however long it was. And then his, later, his mother later told him that the lawyer didn't care about the boats. And he said, well, why would he talk to me about boats for so long? And his response to him was, because he is a gentleman. He saw you were interested in boats, and he talked about the things he knew would interest and please you. He made himself agreeable. Are we making ourselves agreeable to other people? That's a question that we think we should ask ourselves. I know that I, for one, often am not, and it's a pain point that I need to work on. Principle five, talk in terms of the other person's interests. All right, getting into the last principle of part two, titled, How to Make People Like You Instantly. Make the other person feel important and do it sincerely. So he was waiting in line at the post office and he noticed that the, the clerk was in a dismal mood. So he goes up to him and says, you know, really he admires something about him. He admired his hair. He looked up, half startled, his face beaming with smiles. Well, it isn't as good as it used to be, he said modestly. I assured him that although it might have lost some of its pristine glory, nevertheless, it was still magnificent. He was immensely pleased. We carried on a pleasant little conversation, and the last thing he said to me was, many people have admired my hair. So Dale told this story once in public, and a man asked afterwards, what did you want to get from him? What was I trying to get from him? If we are so contemptibly selfish that we can't radiate a little happiness and pass on a bit of honest appreciation without trying to get something out of the other person in return, if our souls are no bigger than sour crab apples, we shall meet with the failure we so richly deserve. Right, so the italicized note here is always make the other person feel important. Right, John Dewey, as we've already noted, said that the desire to be important is the deepest urge in human nature. So are we making people feel important? Are we appreciating them for who they are? You want the approval of those with whom you come in contact. You want recognition of your true worth. You want a feeling that you are important in your little world. You don't want to listen to cheap, insincere flattery but you do crave sincere appreciation. You want your friends and associates to be, as Charles Schwab put it, hearty in their approbation and lavish in their praise. All of us want that. So let's obey the golden rule and give unto others what we would have others give unto us. That's an interesting thing when we think about it. Yes, we want to feel important and we want to feel appreciated. And if we want that, what makes us think that other people don't want the same? So the question that I think I can ask myself, that we should all ask ourselves, is are we giving people the appreciation that they deserve or that will make them feel good about who they are? The unvarnished truth is that almost all the people you meet feel themselves superior to you in some way. And a sure way to their heart is to let them realize in some subtle way that you recognize their importance and recognize it sincerely. Right, Ralph Waldo Emerson said, Every man I meet is my superior in some way. In that, I learn of him. So you see how these principles are starting to cut tie together. Right, we smile, we become genuinely interested in other people, and these pile up where our interest makes us appreciate people for who they are. But if you aren't generally interested in other people and you don't smile and you don't learn about what people's interests are, you know, principle six becomes hard if you haven't built up principle one through five. So these all sort of stack, which is part of why this book is so powerful. Talk to people about themselves, said Disraeli, one of the shrewdest men who ever ruled the British Empire, and they will listen for hours. Principle six. Make the other person feel important and do it sincerely. So that wraps up 
part two and just to uh, one last recap in a nutshell six ways to make people like you become genuinely interested in other people smile remember that a person's name is to that person the sweetest and most important sound in any language be a good listener encourage others to talk about themselves talk in terms of the other person's interests and make the other person feel important and do it sincerely all right so i hope that you found part two useful and can start to implement these principles in your daily life in the way that you think about your interactions with other people. We'll get into chapter three or part three in a, in a video coming soon, so stay tuned for that. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Peace.